And welcome back, tip of the week. Many a builder has often dreamed about having a workshop hangar combination somewhere out in the country near a grass airstrip where they can concentrate on building without the distraction and noise of working at home. Let's take a look at a gentleman who has made this idea a reality. Keep in mind that out in the country there are lots of small parcels of land that can be had for a reasonable cost and it's just a matter of putting together the mechanics of the building and electricity etc etc to make it practical. Let's listen to his story and see if we can learn something. We will keep his location private but suffice it to say that this scenario is typical of many small grass airstrips around the country. There are small tracts of land available adjacent to these public or private airstrips. Of course, a suitable building is needed, but beyond that, most costs can be kept to a bare minimum. Let's see how Steve put together his place. Good afternoon, my name's Steve, and welcome to my uh, secret hideaway. This is a agricultural storage building in a field in pretty much the middle of nowhere. So the original owner of the field, um, now, now my neighbor, put in a 2,000 foot grass airstrip as a labor of love and maintains it. So. I've got a place where I can indulge my uh, passion for flying, construction, and it's, it's actually out in the middle of nowhere, so the skies are beautifully dark at, dark at night, so um, when I'm not flying, I can also do astronomy. I've equipped it with um, its own self-contained power supply, um, so I'm off the grid. I Brought, it, brought in my own remote access, um, a little, little puck device, device that gives me internet connect, connectivity for remote control of, of the, of the um, hangar. And then for entertainment, I have a Bluetooth set of speakers, can come in with, so I can bring podcasts, my own music selection, whatever. So it's, it's a nice place to relax, unwind, get away from the world, be constructive, build something, and when the weather's good, do some flying. So the Mark I Man Caves houses my currently completed project, um, Sonics, which I fly happily out of this um, quiet, quiet airstrip. Um, it also acts as my main workshop for some home projects, but also uh, my, ne my next build and a num number of other engineering electronics projects. I just started construction on a um, all wood um, replica Tiger Moth project. So that called for a 16 foot bench. So there's plenty of that room out in the main hangar to, um, to, put, to put that together. So construction on the, on the tail has just started. This bench will be taken apart once that project is completed. So there's plenty of room for a second aircraft. And then Round the, round the edge, I put up pegboard for storage, a uh, little bit of drywall, and just built some, some very, very simple wooden benches. I also framed a 20-foot square workshop area. So again, I, I've got two runs of benches on opposite, opposite walls. It's got pl plenty of room for building things, for laying things out, um, for electronics on one side, for, for assembly on another. Uh, I also took um, Tony Bengelis's idea of having a square table on wheels with a tool on each corner that you could actually rotate round to make most use of space. I actually went for a hexagonal shape with um, uh, tri tribute to, to Doctor Who, so it's a, a kind of TARDIS, so the TARDIS console shape, um, storage in the middle, uh, I can hook it up to power, there are a couple of 
LED strip light so I can get a lot of illumination on anything I'm working on. I also deliberately designed the height to be exactly the same as any other bench. So with this being totally mobile throughout the, throughout the workshop area, I can bring it up to, an, I can bring the tools on it up to any benches. I can dock the other two mobile benches at almost any angle. Um, so in terms of access to large project pieces, I, I think, I think this, is, this one's gonna be a winner. Yeah, so one of the challenges I encountered was the price that the electricity company wanted to charge to dig a 500 uh, foot uh, trench through rock uh, to, the, to the property. So I looked at, for about half that amount, I could put about a kilowatt's worth of solar panels outside uh, on a frame. And then I sourced my own components to provide the power converter. So what we have um, top left um, takes the 24 volts coming in from the six solar panels. Um, and then that, that is responsible for charging um, this, this bank of batteries. Uh, so I've, I've got about 45 minutes worth of continuous power use of any one large consumption tool before the power would be completely drained if I was working at night. Air compressor. Um, you know, it will, it will power a small air compressor. Probably that's the biggest challenge because of the large startup current. Um, I, yeah, this is probably the second biggest uh, consumer is the, is the hangar door itself. Uh, this is a 32 foot, 10 foot high, 32 foot wide, 10 foot high um, garage door that the company that was putting up this agricultural storage building was able to source. Um, I found that as soon as you mention aircraft, things get really expensive, that includes doors. So th this is a, just a large garage door with a motor over, over to the right. And there's plenty of power to deal with the startup current and f for the door to come up and down. The converter unit comes with a remote control system. So it's possible to use a low voltage switch to turn it on and off. So what I did was take a, a Raspberry Pi and connect that to the to the internet so that I could use a um, just a wireless a simple wireless router, a the, the the Raspberry Pi and some relays to remotely so that with an app on my phone I could use it to switch the uh, relays on and off on the power converter. While I had remote control on on this unit, I added a couple of low voltage uh, relays which will turn 110 volt systems on and off. So on a winter day when I, when I want to fly, I can again through, a, through an app on my phone, I can switch on a battery conditioner, charger, um, the main power to the hangar, and also I have a um, sheet heater on the oil, oil cooler on, on the plane so I can actually pre-warm the engine. Um, without actually having to come, come out and turn the, uh, turn the system on myself. So I can have a you know, relaxed start to the day, come out in about an hour later, I know the battery's charged, the engine's warm, and I'm ready to go. I installed a set, uh, a set of LED strip lights, very low current devices. Uh, um, they have built-in uh, power converters, so they, they, just, they just hook into a standard 110 volt outlet, very little current. Um, I got them, got them from Amazon as a, a box, uh, box of 16. Another um, construction I did was the this um, trolley for a um, just a, a vacuum cleaner, which is actually connected to a dust collection bucket. So the, the suction of the vacuum cleaner pulls, du pulls dust and dirt horizontally into, into this. So there's a cyclone effect, um, it swells. The, so the debris all settle up here. The designers claim about 98, 99% of the dirt goes in here. So it, it really allows me to pull up 
debris from a construction session without overwhelming the filter and reducing the effectiveness of the vacuum cleaner. And then I can just lift, lift the lid off, lift the bucket off in order to, to empty out um, any, any metal or wood, wood filings. And then as I put wiring in, I strung both um, suspended cables um, at a couple of locations for both power and air. Just gives me a little bit more flexibility. Well, thank you, Steve, for that. Wasn't that a nice place? We can all learn from others on how to do things just a little bit better. In the meantime, though, everyone, please, back to building.